A Brief History of Horror. Witches. Ah, the power of magic. Some fear it, some desire it. And that is the dichotomy of the witch genre. For every book or film in which a witch is cast as an evil villain, there is another where she is a protagonist and frankly a character many of us would rather like to be. The perception of witchcraft has a great deal to do with the views and fears of the times. Because of course, witches are usually women. Witchcraft is inexorably linked with female power. Therefore, in times when the power of women is in flux and feared, witches have been the focus of terror. When women's power is celebrated, so too is the mighty and mystical witch. The term witch has long been used for wise women and prophetesses. In the Bible, King Saul asks the witch of Endor to summon a dead prophet to help him in battle. Witchcraft is banned in the Old Testament, which states, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. In medieval Europe, where life was hard and superstition rampant, a failed crop or death in the family was often blamed on the local healing woman or midwife. Though they were usually the ones there trying to help, their mysterious knowledge of the human body and power over life and death brought them under suspicion. The fear of the Christian patriarch labeled them as evil worshipers and concubines of the devil. Many of the symbols we still associate with witches are tools commonly used by women in the Middle Ages. The cauldron was a common cooking pot. Every woman used a broom to clean her house and many kept cats to chase off disease-ridden rats. Even the pointy hat was a common style. Across Europe in the 14th through 17th centuries, approximately 80,000 people, mostly women, were accused of being witches. Once you were accused, defending yourself was a lost cause. Witch hunters used the instruction book, Malleus Maleficarum, or Hammer of the Witches, to torture out confessions. Feeble evidence such as birthmarks, thought to be brands by the devil, or floating in water, were used to send these poor souls to be burned at the stake. Witches have long been the looming terror of fairy tales, told to children to keep them wary of the dangers of the unknown. These morality tales often pit a princess or good little children against an evil hag, bent on cursing them to sleep forever or eating them up. As print became widespread in the Renaissance, these tales were collected and immortalized by the Brothers Grimm and others. German artist Albrecht Dürer often depicted witches in his print engravings. Shakespeare began his famous play Macbeth with a spooky visit to the Weird Sisters, who prophesy the fate of the protagonist. Witchcraft can be found in various forms outside of Western culture in the past and today. In Japan, witchcraft is said to be passed down generation to generation among families, along with their familiars, foxes. In India, women and men accused of witchcraft are often the victims of abuse or vigilantism. In the Middle East, those accused of witchcraft are often pursued and executed by the government. Many African cultures hold practitioners of witchcraft in high regard and respect them as important members of the community. In South Africa, for instance, there are Inyanga, or healers, and Sangoma, or fortune tellers. But there are also the rogue, Tagiti, who aim to harm others and the fear of them has caused many to be harmed or killed unjustly. Among slaves brought to the New World, faith and folk traditions were a melting pot of traditional African beliefs and the Christian religion of the oppressors. Out of this was born voodoo. Practitioners of healing and religious rites are often called witches. In New Orleans, voodoo queens such as the legendary Marie Laveau have exalted positions in their communities. In 1692, in Salem, Massachusetts, a West Indian slave named Tichuba played a fortune-telling game with the young girls in her household. When they were discovered by their father, the Reverend, rather than face punishment, the girls claimed to have been tormented by witches. They began a frenzy of witch trials, neighbor accusing neighbor, resulting in the accusation of over 200 people and the hanging of 20. 
as science overtakes superstition, and we have new explanations for why bad things happen, the idea of witches using magic to curse others has faded away. But we are still fascinated by the mystical glamour of the witch, which is apparent in their frequent appearance in pop culture. In 1918 in the UK and in 1920 in the US, women finally won the hard-fought battle for the right to vote. In the wave of newfound power, anthropologist Margaret Murray published The Witch Cult in Western Europe. This book brought to the public consciousness the practice of ancient pagan religion and influenced the 20th century faith known as Wicca. In 1922, silent Scandinavian film Haxen shows how superstition and misunderstanding of mental illness led to the hysteria of the witch trials. L. Frank Baum's 1900 novel, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, cast the Wicked Witch of the West as its villain, and the 1939 film adaptation cements the classic look of the witch into popular culture. Black gown, pointy hat, broomstick, a long warty nose, and bright green skin which showed up marvelously in this, the first ever film in color. Of course, there is also Gilda, the Good Witch of the North, and we see a glimmer of possibility that one could possess magical powers but still be beautiful and benevolent. Disney films, heavily influenced by traditional fairy tales, often cast the witch as the antagonist. From the evil queen giving Snow White a poison apple, and Maleficent cursing Sleeping Beauty to eternal unconsciousness, to Ursula stealing Ariel's pipes, and Mother Gothel playing serious head games with Rapunzel. Veronica Lake plays a gorgeous and seductive sorceress in 1942's I Married a Witch, and Kim Novak does the same in 1958's Bell, Book, and Candle. Both use their magical powers to seduce their love interests. In 1964, the hit TV show Bewitched cast beautiful Elizabeth Montgomery as a witch who falls in love with a mortal. Her husband Darren is forever badgering her to stop using magic and just be a normal housewife. An obvious metaphor for the 60s man's terror and desire to suppress the power of the liberated woman. In the 60s and 70s, the women's liberation movement gained momentum and women began exploring aspects of their lives beyond the role of wife, mother, and domestic goddess. During these heady days, the mystic and powerful witch came into vogue like never before. The UK in particular began an obsession with their druidic past and the occult became hip and edgy. The modern religion of Wicca gained momentum and followers. Hammer Film Studios, famous for their cult horror films, produced several related to witchcraft, including The Witches and The Devil's Own. Witchcraft cast a spell on theaters in other features such as Suspiria and The Wicker Man. In 1966, psychedelic rock singer Donovan declared it to be the season of the witch. In the 70s, Stevie Nicks of the popular rock band Fleetwood Mac became known as the White Witch, wearing flowing scarves on stage, cultivating a mystical presence, and crooning about Rhiannon. The Eagles serenaded their witchy woman, and Santana bemoaned his love for a black magic woman. 1987 saw three gorgeous stars, Susan Sarandon, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Cher, seduced by the devil in the form of Jack Nicholson, in The Witches of Eastwick. Angelica Houston played a hideous hag bent on destroying children behind a mask of deceptive beauty in The Witches, based on the book by Roald Dahl. Hocus Pocus introduced us to the Sanderson sisters, three witches who long to suck the lives out of all the children of Salem in this spooky and hilarious 1993 Disney movie. Kids saw how cool it would be to go through the horrors of high school with magical powers as they watched Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and how potentially terrifying a bullying clique using witchcraft could be in The Craft. We see the romantic side of witchcraft in practical magic when Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman use spells to solve problems in their love lives. In 1999, the groundbreaking film The Blair Witch Project introduced us to the found footage format, and horror would never be the same. 
The viral marketing campaign and use of unknown actors made audiences unsure if the chilling movie was fact or fiction, resulting in huge buzz for the picture. In 1974, Jill Murphy introduced us to the idea of a school for young witches in her book series, The Worst Witch. Mildred Hubble can't seem to get anything right as she bumbles through potions class and flying lessons. The series has been brought to the small screen in multiple adaptations, even as recently as 2017. But the magic school that became a worldwide phenomenon is Hogwarts. J.K. Rowling's massively popular Harry Potter series tells the tale of an 11-year-old boy who discovers he is a wizard and is invited to attend a school of witchcraft and wizardry. The book series and its film adaptations and spin-offs create a world of unforgettable witches and wizards, both good and evil. Witches continue to be popular fodder for the film industry. Magic and those who wield it for good or evil will always be sources of fascination. Though the intensity of their popularity may flicker, witches are a flame that will never burn out of our popular imagination. How do you like your witches? Wicked women working evil? Seductive and sexy sorceresses? Good-hearted and helpful ladies? Or kids having a blast with magic wands? Let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for more horrifying videos. Thank you for watching.